Got our tractor parts in. Sands one. You'll notice I've got one new knee. There should be two. Wasn't able to find a replacement for this one. And unfortunately, it's the worst of the two as far as how much, how worn that is in there. So that's a bummer. We're gonna have to fix this. Um, I'd wanted to just replace them just because this is gonna be complicated um, to, to fix uh, for, for a couple of reasons. Um, the main reason is that this is a casting, so there's no good services on the outside of it anywhere that I can indicate to whenever I go to put it up on my mill over here. And so I have to get this standing perfectly straight up and down, but as you can see, it's at an angle, right? This leans. And so I'm going to have to have this fixtured up off the table somehow uh, to get it straight up and down. And then I will have to try and uh, indicate off the inside of the bore here to get this straight up and down. It's going to be a real pain. And then in the meanwhile, I'm going to have to build up this bottom shelf and then machine that back down flat to the correct dimension, which since I have the new one here, I can pull the correct dimensions off of this one. Okay, and then see the uh, scoring in the side there? I'm also gonna have to build up these sides and then uh, machine them, that bore, back to size. And in there goes thrust bearing. So here's one of the new parts that I have. As you can see, that's just super loosey-goosey in there. It's not the way it should be. This one, is looser than I expected. I expected this to be a light press fit, and it just goes in there. Um, no real play, so I guess that'll be okay. Um, I don't know, I, I expected that to be a little bit tighter. This goes on these spindles here, thrust bearing, spindle bushing, upper spindle bushing. Okay, so these bushings, they get pressed into the blue part over there, and conveniently, they're already in there. So see that? That's the lower bushing, upper bushing, already in there. So I don't have to mess with that. Um, this one, I have already removed the old ones, um, and I'll show you, I'll do them on this one, even though I don't have to replace these. I'll, I'll cut those out of there and I'll show you how I did it. I'm not saying it's the best way or the right way, but it worked. So I'll show you how I did that. So this will get pressed on to this shaft. Bushings, like I said, uh, for well, one of them are already in there. And then these new ones, once I've machined this bearing pocket back to size, they will get pressed in here. And I'll show you how we do that. It won't be, shouldn't be too difficult. I will probably go ahead and make a tool specifically for doing these. Um, just to make sure I don't mess these up. Although, since that one came with new ones, if I were to mess these up, uh, what I bought was a two-pack. So, I guess I have a set of spare. If you recall, I had left these. I'd already pulled these bearings out, and you can find that in a different video. Um, it's pretty straightforward, though. So, see, you can see that bottom bearing from this side. Um, literally, just take a hammer and a punch and just knock that right bearing race out from the other side. Whenever you take this seal out, let's see if I can get it out, yeah, so this seal, right, whenever you take it out, this part of the bearing comes out, and it's just this race that you're wanting to knock out. So take your punch or something, and you can get right there on that edge, and then hit this side, switch over, hit this side, and you're just right here on this little bitty ledge right there. And work your way around kind of evenly, right, and kind of maybe like a quad pattern like that, and you'll be able to knock that out of there. Now for this side, if you wanted to, you could machine an appropriately sized uh, rod that will fit down in there, and you could use a press. The problem is, on this side, you can't really do that because, you can't really tell on video, but it's that is bigger than this hole. And so just uh, pressing it would not work. You can see on this side though, there are these little cutouts. You see those? See how it's got those kind of cutouts right there on both sides? 
theoretically you could get a puller on those. I tried it and it did not work. So I opted to just use the hammer and knock them out. They're not super tight in there, so that worked just fine. All right, so then to put these back together, for starters anyway, just drop your race in, or the, the cage rather, right? So that's how that goes back together. And then this seal you can just push in by hand and that will hold your bearing in. On this side, this one just drops in. Now, there's nothing to hold this in there and that's because this holds that in there. So in order, whenever we put these actually back together, I'll put the spindle on the knee first and then we'll stick the hub on there and then you'll tighten this down and that's what actually holds the whole assembly together. Um, okay, I think we have a problem here. I don't think this is right. Bearing shouldn't fit that way, I don't think. Um, hmm. It is a thrust bearing, which means it's not designed to take up any axial load this way. The only load that it's designed to take is the force pushing down on it. Um, so if this fit real tightly in here, then I would think, well, maybe it's designed to just float on top and it's not supposed to be touching in there. And I'd probably just run with it. But this fits pretty loosey-goosey in here. Say that. I mean, I don't know. It's not, it's not a loose fit, but it's not like a light press fit either. And I don't want this to be turning. Um, you know, I only want one side of it to turn. So I may have bought the wrong thrust bearings. So we'll get online real quick and look at that and I'll see if I can find, there was a couple different models. Let me see if the other side, if the other one has different dimensions and Maybe I can figure out what's going on here. But I don't think that's right, though. So, uh, let me find out. I'll be back here in a minute. All right, so I've been looking at this, and I've come to a conclusion. Um, this, I think, is fine, even though it's a little bit loose. Keep in mind that this only moves whenever you're turning the wheels on the tractor, okay? And so it's going to turn about that fast and about that much ever in its entire life. Okay, that's about it. So, I don't think uh, that that needs to be a tight press fit. I will make this one a loose press fit whenever I machine it, because I'll be putting it back to the size. But I think that's what's going on here. I think this is designed just to sit there like that, and then float, kind of, if you will, on this part of the this collar. Put the seal on first, and just tap it on the inside, lightly, with a... Uh, hammer and some sort of softer punch. I used that brass one. I uh, tried this wood one, but it was kind of too fat. And then the bearing, this bearing race was pretty tight as well. So just a piece of pipe on the inner race. You want it to be touching the inner race. So inside there, not out here. Point the, more precisely. This part, not this part. Okay. Push on that part. So just a piece of pipe, whatever you can find that will fit on there. And you can see there's a little bit of a gap there and that's because that inner race is slightly taller. So that's where you want that to be hitting. Just tap that down on there until it seats. And now we can reassemble the rest of it. And looks like we're gonna have to tap that that bearing on there as well so let me find something I can use for that and we'll just tap that one in there lightly All right, one thing I almost forgot is it's a good idea to go ahead and put some grease on there went ahead and did both sides now this is a greasable hub so I'm not gonna worry about packing the wheel bearings outside of here but some of these older tractors they don't have greasable hubs if that's the case you need to pack those wheel bearings before you put this back together and if that were the case, then it would also be a good idea to fill the whole inside of this up with grease. And if you wanted to do that right now, now would be the time. It'll be easier. 
I'll just pump it full through the greaser once it's assembled because that seems just as easy and effective to me. Um, but if, if, you're, if you want to, it might be easier just with a spatula or a spoon or something to pack that whole thing full of grease because whenever you add grease here, it's got to fill up that entire chamber. So I don't have any grease here um, to do it with. I've got just a little bit that's kind of scrap that I was able to um, grease that up, up out of. And this is just some that's left over in a bucket here. Uh, but remember, I'm, I'm at work, so uh, the grease that's here, and we have plenty of it, but it, it's not mine. So I can't use it, so I'll have to wait till I get home, and then I'll just refill this. But if this doesn't have a, a greasable hub on it, you need to, need to, need to pack those bearings with grease before you put this back together. So don't forget that. So, okay. Enough said there. Um, I think what we can do instead of tapping that bearing on is I think we can probably just use the castle nut to drive it on. All right? So we're going to try that. Yep. I can almost do it by hand. I can do it by hand. Ugh, it's really tight though. Let me grab a crescent wrench. All right, so whenever you're tightening these down, you're going to want to go until it hits the bottom, right? That's about it. Snug. Don't crank on it. And then crack this back loose and then line up your holes here that's why these have cotter pins in them this doesn't need to be tight it should still be loose it should be just the slightest you want a little, just a little bit of preload on there on that bearing and so I don't know you guys can't feel that but there's no play in it this way it's nice and tight and then we'll get that cotter pin cotter key stuck back in there right don't over tighten these though you're just creating extra friction and it'll just wear your bearings out faster um, so that's how you do that on these tapered roller bearings just squish it all down together until it's snug you'll feel it kind of bottom out and then back it off about an eighth of a turn or so until you get to one of these uh, holes and then put your cotter pin through there and then once I get the cotter pin in the last step is, will be just to screw this dust cap back on there and that hub and spindle assembly will be essentially rebuilt and ready to go back on the tractor. So let me do this other one too. Now, I was noticing, I don't like this. On this one, let's look at this one. So you see the difference in the surface finish between here and here. So this is just the rough lathe marks from turning it. See over here, it gets smoother again as well. So this is a ground finish. Okay, and this is just a rough finish. These areas are what actually rides in the spindle bushings, which are just these soft consumable bushings. This one, focus. All right, this is where that's supposed to ride. And see the discoloration here? That's because this has been heat treated, um, which is good. So it's hardened and, and probably tempered back. Um, but they just left the uh, the rough machine surface on here. It's almost like they forgot a step. Look over here at this side where the tapered roller bearings go. That's nice smooth, ground finish, both sides of that. And this one is not though. So uh, I'm debating. I, I think I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get these in my lathe. And this has a center hole on it right here. So I think I can get these, if I can chuck up on it, I don't know, I, really, I need to grind all the way to here. So that's inconvenient. The, the best way to do this would be to turn it in between centers. Just gotta have a dog of some sort on it in order to do that. So let me see if I can get this in my lathe real quick and I'll see if I can figure out the setup I like and, and we'll, we'll grind these down myself here. So this is turning between centers. So what that means is we have a center here, and this one's a live center. Okay, so see how it turns with the part? It's called a live center. And this one over here is a dead center, meaning that it, it does not move. We didn't have one, so I had to make one real quick. No big deal. Uh, so this is 60 degrees, uh, included angle, same on both sides. And if we look at, like, see this hole here? This is the center that was the other side. Of when they were turning this spindle, there will be another one in here. 
right there. So you cut those holes that specific shape with what's called a center drill. See how it fits in there perfect? So you can tell they used a number five center drill to center drill those holes. Probably the same back here. Yeah. So I can reuse those center holes, right? These centers where they've got them put in and like, see that's not, not in the center of the uh, part at all, but that is gonna be the center now of this shaft. Well, the same thing on this one. That center is already put in there, so I know where they turned it from, right? In between these two centers. So now I can just fix your back up on them. This is what's called a lathe dog. And so what's gonna happen is, as the chuck spins, it's gonna spin that part for me. See how that works? It's got sitting there pushing on it because this is free to kind of spin on its own. But that dog is gonna sit there and push it. Now this will be a really light operation. All I'm gonna do is clean up the machine marks here and here, and we'll take just a, a couple thousandths off of this. And I'm gonna do that with a tool post grinder. All right, so we're over here getting the tractor put back together. And I uh, went ahead and bolted the knee on. Um, this is uh, the kind of the driver's side, I guess, if you will. So the right side, if you're looking at it from the front of the tractor. Um, went ahead and got these on, tightened up. Um, no big deal, just matched them off of uh, the way it was before. This is, you can kind of adjust this in and out to adjust the, uh, the uh, front wheelbase here. I'm just gonna put them back uh, the way it was when I took it apart. Now I'm going to put this back on here. I'm um, not quite sure what this is called. Um, some sort of a stabilizer it keeps this kind of where it's supposed to be. Anyway, um, I don't know if you guys can see that, but the there, see how that thread is moving? <laughs> That's because it is, yeah, see that? The bottom of that bolt is stripped, so it's being really hard to get this uh, nut back on there. So for now, I'm going to leave that in there um, while I install the rest of this, but we're going to go ahead and replace this bolt. Um, it's got paint all over the top of it here, but you can tell what grade the bolt is. So see, this is, there's a, um, hang on. So, see there's, there's a line cast into the top of it. Well, that might be it right there, right there, and right there. So three marks, that means that this is a grade five bolt. So whenever I go to replace this, I'll make sure to replace it with the same kind. One thing to note, this is the other one. Let's see if it looks the same. This one's in better shape. On the that first one over there that I'd already put back in place, this the middle of this was actually worn. Some of the diameter of the bolt was gone. So probably should have been replaced anyway. I wasn't going to worry about it because I didn't have one on hand, but I'm never going to get those threads started. So we're going to replace that one, and I'll probably just bring out two, and we'll replace both of them. So anyway, I will measure that and see how long it is, and it's a, it's a 5 8 bolt. And interestingly, that is a fine pitch thread. So not sure why Ford decided to put a fine pitch thread on there, but we'll replace it with a fine pitch thread the way they intended it. I would almost forgot, I've got new uh, drag link ends for this. Um, it's this part right here. And I just realized also that this uh, you need to put on top of the knee because there's no way to get it up there, right, <laughs> once you've put the knee on. Since I have to take the drag leak ends off anyway, no big deal. Um, I've got one for each side. And then really, I'm looking at this. This is bent right here. I should have uh, probably replaced that entire drag link. So this is, they call this a drag link end. This is called like a drag link tube or something like that. And then this entire piece is the other drag link end uh, whenever you're ordering the parts. You know, I might be able to steer the wheel. Other way. That might give me enough room. See, this is going to be inconvenient. I, I may have to take this all back apart um, because this is all kind of in itself's way now. So if you guys are doing this, learn from my mistake. Go ahead and get that drag link in, uh, up on top. 
uh, before you put the knee on in this little uh, stabilizer. Again, I'm not sure what that's actually called. Uh, to take these um, drag link ends off, you just loosen up this bolt and then you unthread these out of here. The left hand side is a left hand thread. Alright, so it's backwards. <laughs> can be a little bit confusing. Just like that. So now we're going to take this bolt off and then that will let me take this little kind of ball joint thing off of here. So let me get that off real quick and uh, we'll get the new one put on. One thing that's a little bit different about the new ones is that they came with uh, castle nuts, uh, whereas the old ones just had lock nuts on them. So we'll go ahead and we'll use that and we'll put the cotter keys in there and they came with them. Also this hole on the back right here, uh, it comes with a greaser that you thread in the back of there. So we'll put those in as well. Oh, there goes the boot off of this one. What I'm doing to get this spacing right is just simply holding this up, kind of like that. You can see how far this one was in there. And so we can just kind of compare those and get them pretty close. If we put this back together and my steering's not right, we'll take this back apart and I can adjust this piece. So, um, yeah, that's where that belongs, so I think. So we'll just tighten this back up now. Actually, I say that I'm going to wait. Yeah, I'm going to wait until I actually put this back up here. Dang, I forgot. i got to take that back out so that I can get this back up here. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll leave this loose, um, this bolt that is, until I get it back up here and attached to the uh, spindle. And then we'll tighten this back down. And that will make sure that it's all kind of lined up properly. All right, it's more or less done. So I've got our new drag link in, uh, the new spindle in there, freshly machined uh, knee, and remember we've got our new lugs. I've already filled this one up with grease, as you can see, took a lot. Uh, so now I need to fill this all up with grease. Uh, there is a little rubber seal in between this and the knee. I did not get new ones, so I'm reusing the old ones. That's not ideal. I guess I kind of forgot that I that I needed those, and I didn't see them anywhere. Um, now this, as you can see, there's a keyway there, and this uses these type of uh, woodruff keys is what these are called. That one's kind of dirty. Um, these keys are, are a particular pain in the butt because they're half moon shaped. If everything's not lined up just perfectly, there's really no room for error as you're driving it or trying to to push this part down on top of the shaft your key will just kind of squirt out the bottom so <laughs> uh, i've been fighting it a little bit um, i've got a file and I'll, I'll do this one as well but just clean up all of the uh, faces of this and make sure there's no weird burrs that might catch something all right so we got this spindle finished up here uh, this one went together easier so uh, this this spindle and the other side, they're obviously made by different manufacturers. This one is one entire just cast part that's been machined in, in both axes. The other one is two separate parts that have been welded together. So, in my opinion, this one's more correct, um, but whatever, they should both work just fine. Of course, I showed you the other one is the one that had the problem that I had to machine it. Uh, once I got it back to the shop uh, in order to make the uh, bushing journals fit correctly. So we've got all this hooked up and as you can see we've put grease in here. Uh, we've greased this. I've made kind of a mess of it. We'll clean that up. Uh, but you can see grease coming out of that side and I've got grease coming out of the bottom as well. So that's all good news. Now this one which again is in my opinion more correct I think was manufactured better the woodruff key was much easier to put in. On that note, if I were you and I was doing this again, or if I were me and I was doing this again for that matter, I would take this arm right here off of this, even if you're not replacing the uh, drag link end there, uh, I would take that off and fit it on there and get it bolted up first and then reconnect it to the drag link end 
Uh, I did not do that on this one, but as I was finishing it up, I realized that would have been way easier uh, than doing it the way I did with it all connected together. So, uh, I've got a slight uh, problem. It's not really a problem, but if we look at the bolt pattern here, right, where I have the uh, bolts that hold everything together sticking through, that one's not right. That one is right. So you can see there's kind of a, uh, a bulge right there. Where And that bolt I haven't put in yet. I've got new ones for it. But I haven't put that in yet. So that's got kind of a, a swell in the casting, if you will. And it's the hole right next to it is where the bolt should be. On this one, a little bit more defined. And this one's it's more modern. It's newer, so... They have uh, reduced the amount of material that they have to use to make the same part. Um, yeah, put that in the wrong hole. So I'm going to have to unbolt those and uh, shift it over. So we're going to do that real quick. And then the hubs are filled up. The spindles are filled up with grease, that is. Uh, steering's all reconnected. So we should be good to go. Uh, we'll just throw the tires back on. And from there, we'll eyeball it as close as we can. And, okay, the other thing I realized is that these are both left-hand uh, threads on this end, which makes sense. And uh, I, I should have realized what was going on there. I was thinking that these were a, a left and right-hand part because the spindles are left and right-hand part. And the knees are left and right-hand part. Right, they're, they're not reversible. Um, these, however, are universal. They're the same on both sides. They're both left hand, and so what's going on here is we have a left hand thread on this side, a right hand thread on this side. I can loosen both of these bolts and then turn the collar, and that's how I can adjust the uh, steering to make sure that the wheels are actually straight when they're supposed to be straight, right? To make sure that they're pal parallel to each other. So, anyway, just a thought there. So let me uh, get this shifted over. Um, we'll replace that bolt on that fork. I still don't know what that's called. We'll get the other one in on the other side. And again, I've got brand new ones for it. So um, yeah, let's get that done. Bring it back. All right, so we've got that problem fixed. Um, both the bolts are in. I seem to have lost the nut for that side. Now, interestingly, uh, the original bolts were fine threads. So... Uh, I'm, I, I can't see why that would need to be a fine thread. The difference between a fine thread and a coarse thread is that the fine thread can actually hold a little bit more load. Um, it, it's stronger in tinsel. Uh, if you guys want to, I, I can do a full kind of deep dive video on why that is, uh, if you're curious. But it's uh, just a little bit of material science that I happen to love. So let me know in the uh, comments below if you guys want to see the deep dive on that. Anyway, we'll get a new bolt for, or a, a nut rather, for that side. Now, uh, that one looks pretty straight. This one is kind of turned, the hubs that is. So the next thing that we want to do here is make sure that the both the hubs are parallel to each other. The first thing you want to do is make sure that these cylinders, this one and the one on the other side, are the same now I forgot to bring a uh, like a measuring tape or something so I kind of just used a bolt to compare and I can get it pretty close here we'll run it for a little bit and uh, if uh, if it's not right I'll fix it so I've loosened these up I think that's where I need to go with it because it, they're they're pretty even right now like I said and what we'll do is we'll turn this with a pipe wrench until this one looks the same straightness as the other ones and to compare the straightness I'm just using the uh, the back tire there so see how this one is kind of this way and then this one it looks pretty well lined up so we're gonna adjust the other side there real quick and uh, see if we can get them to match all right, so we've got them both slightly towed in, which is kind of the way that they normally sat before. I'll show you this one again. 
Uh, no, actually, right now, I think it's the camera angle. It, it looks like it's turned this way, but it, it's actually not. If we... On here... Hmm? It may be. I don't know. So we're just going to have to drive it around.